So needless to say, the last episode of this series was quite interesting. A polarizing episode, I think it could be called, rightfully so, where we finally went through and blew up this team in a ridiculous fashion. Now, am I completely happy with where this series has gone or how this series has gone so far? No, not exactly. Again, we started off as an expansion team. We ended up trying to take that shortcut. It didn't quite work out. And now we're in a very interesting spot where all we know is we have some decent prospects and an ungodly amount of picks coming up in the next draft. Which some people aren't happy about, which is understandable. I get it. Pick hoarding takes away the enjoyment for some people. Again, it wasn't the planned pick hoard. You had a choice. I mentioned that choice, or we had a choice in the last episode, and I mentioned that a lot. It's either we trade for a bunch of prospects, or just... It, bottom line is, we were going to end up with a lot of draft picks. We ended up with a lot of draft picks in this series before. That's what happens when you sell, you know, your players. That's what happens when you get rid of people. But I'm not going to sit here and, you know, try to justify everything I did in the last episode. It is what it is. We are moving on. Now, I did sim a, a couple of days... Um, just to end up signing some AHL players, I'll show that in a second, but the funny thing is we are now in a playoff spot, so who knows what will happen in this episode moving forward. There is still a chance we could make the playoffs. Of course, these are the lines that we are going with. I mean, God, this team is going to change so, so much moving forward, but of course, again, these are the lines we're going with. Posta, uh, Postma, Mele, and Laredo are the scratches down in the AHL. Uh, we signed Medvinov, Kondratiev, and Tursambayev. These three players were signed by the game to AHL deal, so I had to sign them myself uh, so that we can eventually get rid of them and go best lines. I also signed guys like Wagner and Kahlberg to try and make this team a little bit better, uh, Devontae Stevens as well, because the Connecticut Whale are in second place in their division. So... We have a lot to keep our eyes out, or uh, we have a lot to keep our eyes on. We got a lot of things we have to focus on. We got to be on the lookout for what could happen as we move forward here. I mean, again, you can see the Connecticut Whale record. Uh, it's pretty damn good. We'll see if that continues. I have no idea what to expect here. We're going to keep focusing on the CHL leagues. And we'll see what happens from there. Now, of course, I mentioned in the last episode as well as we immediately get an injury. I'm just going to go best lines in the AHL for the rest of the year. As we get Nick Jensen on waivers. You know what? I will actually claim him. He could be a, a decent improvement. I think I needed one extra depth defenseman anyway, so that's fine. But I mentioned... God, what was I going to say? No, oh, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. Oh, that this episode was supposed to be, you know, us getting to the draft. If we make the playoffs, that might not happen. I mean, you can look at our record so far. We have a 3-3 three and three record. Make that a 3-4 and four record after that loss to Detroit. But there's still a chance we could make it, and then this would be a, a playoff video <laughs> instead of a draft video. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see, but I was obviously anxious after recording the last episode to see what the reaction was going to be because I knew it was a really crazy episode. I told you guys throughout the course of that episode that, you know, I sat here for a couple of days thinking what is the best course of action? What is going to make this series more interesting moving forward? And I felt like that was the best way to go about it because we knew that team just wasn't what we wanted it to be. So, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and try to justify it. It's fine. We're moving on. I'm honestly hoping, as Tuzolino goes down to injury, uh, we'll just go best lines. Not have Postma. Uh, you know, the, the game will put Postma into the lineup for me, which is fine. I mean, I'm hoping we don't make the playoffs. We did just win four games in a row before losing to Winnipeg. I would prefer to get to the draft, as we lose Nolan Patrick to a concussion as well. So I'm glad our players are dropping like flies right now, making it more likely that we actually will miss out. We do have 42 wins, though. It's going to be close. It is going 
to be close. Uh, let's go defense for... I went five weeks for the forwards. I'm going to go five weeks for the defense as well. I could have gone six weeks for the forwards, but we got to play it safe. And actually, let's see here. As uh, Casey Ribeiro goes down to injury. My God, the amount of injuries. We have two games left this season. Are we currently in a playoff spot? We are. We're going to the playoffs. Wow. That's how bad everybody else is. We completely blew up our team, yet we are going to the postseason. Alrighty then. Well, let's uh, let's sim to the end here because this is suddenly a playoff video. All right, we'll have to take a look at some season stats. We'll have to take a look at player progression. We know the Connecticut Whale are going to make it, so this is going to be uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. Right. <laughs> Okay, we made the playoffs with a 45-32-5 record. The Connecticut Whale finished the season at 47-25-10. and 10. We are going to the playoffs. We, I mean, we're going to be playing Winnipeg. We almost took home ice advantage from the Jets. We were only, we were only, we were only six points back of St. Louis. And now I know some people are going to be screaming like, well, Toogie, you should have... You should have kept the team together. You should have kept the team together because, yeah, you made you would have made the playoffs, and then more than likely you would have been good to go. And you know what? You're probably not wrong. Again, we made the cup final. But I still can't help but feel moving forward, you know, for, for the... For the... It's for the betterment of the series. It's... I'm trying to think of the right phrase here, and it's escaping me, and I'm sorry. I'm not just going to sit here and keep stuttering <laughs> trying to think of it. But I feel like it's, it was the best decision for this series to do what we did. But, I mean, yeah, the fact is we are going to the postseason. We finished with the 14th best record in the league, 95 points. Pretty ridiculous. So, I mean, yeah, in a way, I'm certainly wishing we had certain players on our team right about now that could perhaps help lead us to a cup run. But, hey, we made it anyway, so who's to say what's going to happen, right? As you get a look at the point totals, uh, I'm not going to sit here and name uh, every player. As a matter of fact, let's just go straight to goaltenders. As you get a look there, Petra Linen did a hell of a job in his nine appearances. But, yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick look at those stats. And, actually, you know what? We will take a look at AHL stats, especially, too, because Phil Crosby uh, tore it up uh, last year and been the same this year. 68 points once again led the Connecticut Whale in scoring. Uh, how did he do league-wide? I can't imagine 68 points puts him near the top. Eh, it's actually not bad. It's actually not too bad. Not a bad season at all for one Phil Crosby. So we'll take a look at our player progression really quick. We'll take a look at what we're going to be going up against as the Whale will be playing the Laval Rocket. We'll take a look at what we're going to be going up against in the form of the Winnipeg Jets. And then we have a postseason matchup to go through. Now, of course, Leidecker uh, really started, or Leidecker, really started to improve this season, currently up to an 88 through natural growth. Statistical growth, he's up to an 89. Uh, Dirksen, up to an 81. And that is it for natural growth, aside from Bill McIntyre, who's up to a 76. Down in the AHL, I have Casey Ribeiro at a 74. Four. Tony Andrews went up to a 73. Improvement for Tikhanov. Lang went up by three. Ellington and Sereda improved, as did Knudsen. And that was pretty much it. Of course, we ended up getting rid of quite a few prospects that we just were not confident in moving forward. So, actually, here, you know, let's advance day, get that confirmation. We know what's coming. And actually, I'll, I'll take a look at the lines, too. I want to set that up and get them both into the uh, ideal setup as we will be playing the Winnipeg Jets. Unbelievable that this has turned in to a playoff video. I certainly didn't expect it. We're almost 10 minutes into this episode, too, so let's hurry up, shall we? So the Winnipeg Jets. Right now, you still have the top line of Ellers, Shifley, and Line A, all 89 overall. Second line, you have Kyle Connor, who's made it up to an 86. With Brian Little and Marcus Johansson. Third line of Nikita Soshnikov, Derek Broussard, and Zach Hyman. So, uh, 
A little Toronto and Ottawa line there. Fourth line is Jansen Harkins with Jack Rosovic, who just really didn't pan out. And Marku Karpainen. Hell of a name. On defense, you have Josh Morrissey and Jacob Truba. Shea Theodore with Jordan Schmaltz and Jake Gardner with Logan Stanley, who really hasn't developed at all. The goaltender is Connor Hellebuck. Devin Dubnik is the backup. Dubnik, Dubnik, I never know for sure. Obviously, I can't be too confident. You know, if who's to say we wouldn't have won the division title? You know, if we didn't get rid of the players that we got rid of? Who's to say, you know? Oh, it's such a weird situation we find ourselves in right now. It really is. It really is. Actually, who was scratched right now? Aha, McIntyre scratch. I want to uh, take out Postma. God, am I, am I regretting making those moves right now? Not completely, but a little bit. Because who's to say what would have happened, right? Maybe this was our year. Maybe I cut ties a bit too early, although, like I mentioned, we definitely would have struggled to hold on to Marner and Pasternak, only to then trade them. <sighs> What's done is done, right? But what I do know is that right now we have a playoff series to start, so let's do this. We're going to jump right in. It is game one, Whalers and Jets in the first round. Let's do this first period. And we have the lead. Karpainen gets the opening goal only for Leidecker and Harkins to get the goals back. We have a 2-1 lead, not to mention Harkins scored from center ice. That's always fun. Second period. Okay. <laughs> what what am I what what am I supposed to say to this? Harkins, Patrick, and Sprong add three more. It is five to one as we start the sim on the third period not sure what's happening to the jets brian little does get a power play goal on malcolm suban but we have a 5-2 lead and we are well on our way here to taking game one on the road 5-2 final the Hartford Whalers beat the Winnipeg Jets in game one. Now, am I expecting... Did I expect to get swept? No. So I can't say that I'm too surprised. But 5-2? to two? That's a little bit shocking. Not to mention, uh, speaking of shocking, unfortunately, the Connecticut Whale did lose game one. We'll keep an eye out on that situation. But right now, our focus goes to the main club. It's game two against the Jets' first period. And again, it's it's the same thing. Leidecker and Harkins. Soshnikov, though, gets the goal before the end of the period. I don't know how to feel about any of this. I can't believe we're even simming through the playoffs right now. Second period. Nolan Patrick makes it 3-1. to one. All right, third period. We have the two-goal lead. Early power play chance is... Uh, Wasted, unfortunately. The Jets have a power play opportunity of their own that they can't capitalize. And we are halfway through the third period with that 3-1 lead still intact. Make it five minutes to go. Another power play chance for the Jets is killed off. And the Hartford Whalers have a 2-0 series lead. Nolan Patrick with a three-point night. 26 saves for Malcolm Subban. Leidecker with a two-point performance. And I'll reiterate, the Hartford Whalers have a 2-0 series lead. And the Connecticut Whale also managed to win game two. All right, let the good times roll. Let's keep going. Game three, right? Yeah. <laughs> game three against Winnipeg. First period. I don't know what else to say. Dirksen gets the only goal of the first. We have the one nothing lead. Okay, that's... What is going on lately? Second period. Scoreless. Malcolm Subban so far with 22 saves. Hopefully he can keep that up as we begin the sim on the third period. 
And, ooh, Jake Gardner. Jake Gardner. You knew Jake Gardner was going to score at least one goal, right? He had to. He had to. We are halfway through the third period. Power play chance for Winnipeg. That's killed off. Five minutes to go. Next goal will win this game. But we're going to have to wait until overtime to find out. But thankfully for us, this is a video game. So we can find out right now. Let's see. Will it end early? Don't blink. You might miss it. That was a weird pause there for a second. I thought for sure someone was going to score. Speaking of scoring, we can't score on that power play. That's unfortunate. Uh, we might be going the distance here. Perhaps or perhaps not. Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor gets the goal in overtime. A 37 save effort from Malcolm Subban. In the end, the offense just couldn't get it going. 37 saves for both goaltenders. And the Winnipeg Jets aren't done yet. The Connecticut Whale managed to lose game three, though. That is unfortunate. So the Jets stay alive. The home team has yet to win. We'll hope to change that here in game four. And we may just find out the fate of the Connecticut Whale. We'll see if they have managed to survive and force that game five. I'm going to guess no. Yeah, there it is. So, unfortunately, the Whale are out in the first round. Having Neuwirth and Gold didn't help them all that much. But, hey, they made the playoffs. I'm kind of impressed. Speaking of kind of impressed about teams making the playoffs, hey, let's focus on this series now, shall we? It's game four. First period is scoreless. They outshot us 12-8. to eight. Second period is not scoreless. Leidecker and Broussard. A goal apiece. By the way, Dubnik is in. So right now, the Jets having to rely on their backup. Third period. Well, let's go. The question is, what happened to Connor Hellebox? Is he injured for the game? Long term, who knows? Power play chance is capitalized on. Nolan Patrick gets the goal. We have the lead. We kill off a pretty big power play opportunity there for the Jets. Three and a half minutes to go. Can we hold on? Oh my god, we can. The Hartford Whalers have a 3-1 series lead on the Winnipeg Jets. A 30-save performance for Malcolm Subban. Two points for Leidecker. And the goal for Nolan Patrick. And, uh, yeah. We have a 3-1 series. Okay, let's just... Let's not try to think about the absurdity that is this episode and this series at this point. Game 5 in Winnipeg. We managed to win both games on the road to start this series. Can we end this series right here and right now? Let's find out. I wonder if Squeaky Chair managed to pick up there. God, I hate this chair. First period of Game 5 is scoreless. They outshot us 14-10. to 10. Second period is not scoreless. A goal of East for Zach Hyman and Connor Roberts. And we are tied at one. They are, they're out shooting us 27 to 18 at this point. We still got 20 minutes to go in regulation. Next goal could very well win it. And Ryan McKinnis gets the goal, the fourth liner for us that you, you wouldn't even know was on this team. But he, hey, he's here. He scored. That, that won't be the series winner. I won't get ahead of myself. No, not at all. Roslovic ties it. The next goal, though, could win this game. Two and a half minutes to go. Are we going to overtime yet again? Yes. In fact, we are. By the way, Connor Hellebuck's in, so there you go. Roslovic ties it. I was going to say ties it and ties it and just came out and ties it. Overtime in game five. Can the Hartford Whalers end this series? We have a power play opportunity early that we absolutely waste. The Jets managed to win the first overtime game. Kyle Connor scored just before the second overtime. And we're right about uh, at the same point in time here in this overtime. Will we go to double? Yes, we will. Two overtimes. We're going to that second overtime here in game five. Let's go. Can we end the series? Yes, we can. Hunter Shinkarek. With the goal in overtime, I just 47 saves for Malcolm Subban. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm struggling for words here, guys. 
I re- the the insanity, the absurdity of last episode where we just blow this team to smithereens. And now we somehow make the playoffs in this episode. We expected this episode to be a draft video. At least I did. We make the playoffs. And then not only that, we eliminate the Winnipeg Jets in the first round in five games. I mentioned having slight regret over trading certain players. Yet we're still going to the second round. Seven points in five games for Lucas Leidecker. Seven points in five games for Nolan Patrick. Four points for Daniel Sprong. What a combination Patrick and Leidecker have been so far. Warren Dirksen with the lone goal. Uh, Tierney with a point. No points for Connor Brown. On the third line, Hunter Shankarrett got his only point of that series. It was a big one, though. <laughs> Three assists for Kosarenkov and the one point for Taylor Radish. One point for Max Jones. One goal for Ryan McInnes. And two points for Connor Roberts. Defensively, Prover off with three points. Four points for Gary Harkins, including three goals. Uh, the point for Tuzolino. Four points for Lilligren. And you got McIntyre and Spruill. No points, but not minus players either. However, Malcolm Subban. I don't know what it is about Malcolm Subban. And it doesn't help it doesn't help that feeling of regret towards getting rid of players because if Malcolm Subban could play like this with a Marner and with a Posternock on this team, then who's to say what could have happened? Yet regardless, we're still going to the second round. This is such the past two episodes have been such a strange like, it's, I, I, it's been such a strange time. It's just bizarre. <laughs> we we make the playoffs. We, we blow up our team. No expectations, at least on my part, to make the playoffs. We make it. And now we're moving on to the second round where we will play the St. Louis Blues who of course will have home ice advantage. They also won their first round series in five games. They finished the regular season with 46 points. We'll take a look at their lineup in the next episode. They beat the Ducks in five. The other series, Calgary over Vancouver in seven, San Jose over Arizona in seven. Over in the East, Pittsburgh beat Columbus in five. The Islanders beat Tampa in seven. Florida beat Detroit in six, and the Devils beat the Habs in seven. So there you have it, your Elite Eight. And that includes the Hartford Whalers. Wow. To to avoid just rambling, and because I, I am still struggling to find the words here, guys, we will end this episode... I don't know what else to say other than thank you for watching. I do appreciate the support, of course. You know what to do if you care to support the video aside from just or beyond, you know, just watching it. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Links are in the description to my Twitter and Twitch. Give me a follow on there if you haven't already. And until next time where we play the Blues in the second round, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I need to lie down.